Black listeners, I'm Robin Black, and this is It's All About Healing Podcast. Today, I have a special guest with us today, Jeff Knoll, and he's going to speak with us about his story and his journey with dissatisfied accomplishments. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great, and I really appreciate you having me come on. Thank you so much. No problem at all. I loved uh, speaking with others and connecting with others about their adversities and how they overcame those adversities. So I'm very excited to hear how you overcame yours. So tell us a little bit about your story. Well, I mean, my story really started to get interesting whenever it started to go south. So I I am 39 years old. I started um, most of my life. I felt like I was really not that good at anything. Mediocre at best, you know, <laughs> kind of have done all kinds of things and just been okay. And, uh, a few years ago, 2021 in November, I, I got really sick. I was at home. My wife, uh, is like, babe, you need to go to the doctor. I'm, I've got all of this like pooling blood underneath my skin. I have, my gums are bleeding. I've got coagulated blood that I'm having to rinse out of my mouth every half hour or so, picking out all these clots of blood in my teeth. And I knew that wasn't normal, but I am a real estate agent and Mm -hmm. being self-employed, I didn't have health insurance. And I'm also a guy. Guys are notoriously bad about not going to the doctor whenever we have a need, you know, you Mm -hmm. know, we'll, we'll be fine. You know, it's, you just write it out, maybe take take some medicine, you'll be fine. So yeah. I'm writing it out for about a week before my my wife talks me into going. I mm-hmm. go to the a nurse practitioner in the neighboring town, and I wasn't scared until I walked in there. And she looks at me and she looks visibly scared. Yeah. I, I said, Oh, should should I be worried? <laughs> and yeah. And she said, no, let's, let's wait until we get the the test back. But she's like, this isn't great, but don't freak out. We'll, we'll see what the test before we make any assumptions. So I go to the bathroom. I remember going into the bathroom in that clinic and looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, oh my goodness, I look like warmed over death. It was, I, I felt like I had been run over by a train. I, I look bad. I'm like, okay, no wonder she is freaking out. And I'm, I'm like, I'm a little bit shaky at this point. I'm, I'm a little scared. I get a call about a half an hour later from this doctor saying, um, Jeff, you need to go to the emergency room. They're going to give you some platelets. Uh, my platelet count, which is supposed to be between 250,000 and 400,000 is, is that normal range was less than 1000. So they, they say that's pretty much none. You have no platelets. If you were to get a cut right now, you would bleed out. That's what clots your blood. Right. So, so, um, my wife takes me to the emergency room. They pump some platelets in me and they're like, Oh, we're going to transfer you to this other hospital by ambulance. And I know that I don't have insurance and I know that an ambulance ride is going to be a lot, especially considering it was like, an hour and a half drive. I was like, no, mm-hmm. I'm not riding in an ambulance. My wife can take me to the other hospital. We'll do that. So we go, they, they have the room ready or the, they, we go to their emergency and then they, they end up moving me from emergency room to the oncology floor. And at this point, I still don't even know what's going on. I'm looking around and just realized from the, one of the things in my room that it says oncology and I'm like, is this the only room that's available? Why, why am I here? Why am I here? And I come to find out the symptoms that I have are also symptoms that are associated with lymphoma or leukemia. Mm -hmm. And, and I start worrying, you know, they, they haven't done, they haven't done the test for that yet, but I'm worrying and Mm -hmm. I know that that's not going to do anything to help, you know, so, you know, yeah. I've, I've read enough self-development books in my life to know that nothing positive comes from a negative mindset. So right. I'm doing everything that I can not to think about this, but they still had COVID restrictions in this hospital. I have a 12 year old mm-hmm. son that from the time we went to the emergency room, wasn't allowed to go back. 
he he didn't see me again from that time and i know he's he's worried because dad looked like he was about dead and now he can't see him right and so i'm worrying about him um i'm worrying about all of the things that are going on my, my wife is at home taking care of him between coming to to take you know spend some time with me and working and so i spent four days there and i had a whole lot of time in my mind mm -hmm. and in that i was thinking about all of the possibilities of what if i what if i have lymphoma what if i have leukemia yeah. what what if we're really late into this and because i don't go to the doctor regular and i don't i don't get checkups what if i'm catching this at the tail end and i just have a couple weeks and yeah. i'm thinking about all of the things the plans that i've talked about with my son mm -hmm. and my wife and my family of you know i, I i've always been a dreamer i've always yeah. i've always you know had a, a vision for something bigger than what i have but i've never really accomplished anything all that great and i and i i say that i look i've got i'm so blessed yeah. i have an incredible family i have uh i have so much to be grateful for and thankful for in my life but all of these things that i've talked about that i want to accomplish never really come to fruition nothing mm -hmm. ever really comes of it and i I'm thinking, man, I've just been all talk my whole life. Yeah. And it killed me. It killed me thinking about that. It also killed me thinking that my son is 12 years old at this point. And I feel like as a parent, the most important thing that you can do is teach your children how to be successful in life, mm -hmm. not just how to survive and how to make it. I feel like if you're doing your job as a parent, you are teaching your kids how to thrive yeah, and, and really become the best version of who they are. Yeah. And if I'm not doing that myself, I can't do that. And so I was, I was just terrified. Honestly, I was, I was worried and I'm, I'm definitely getting deep into prayer and, um, yeah. uh, background on me my dad was a preacher i grew up in church i was always there after i got out of after i moved out of the house i really quit i really quit with all of that and i it's not that i quit believing but mm -hmm. my i just did things differently <laughs> you know right. i i grew up thinking believing things a certain way because i was told that that's how you're supposed to believe it that's this is what is this is the truth and everything else is not right. And so, you know, I was kind of going through life, trying to figure out what I, what do I believe? What, right. What do I actually believe myself? So, um, I'm sorry. I'm having a, a moment just thinking here, but You're fine. I'm concerned with all of these things, but whenever I get out, they did their tests. I didn't have loof lymphoma or leukemia and i was you know so so grateful thankful for that but i am at this point i'm about 285 pounds i had i was 300 pounds a few months before that and i had lost some weight kind of unexplained mm -hmm. i wasn't really doing anything to lose weight so mm -hmm. i didn't know what was going on with that but i decided my my weight may have had nothing to do with that specific health issue that I had, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was going to cause issues later in life. Both yeah. my parents had type two diabetes. Um, you know, my dad's got high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, and I don't. You know, if I can avoid some of these things, so I can be here longer to to not have to be laying on what's potentially my deathbed thinking about, you know, I don't want to be in that same spot again on something right. that I can avoid myself. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I'm like, I'm going to change, I'm going to change these things. Uh, also they put me on prednisone, which was spiking my blood sugar. So I, I, on my own just changed my diet. I cut, 
I cut out all of the carbs and sugars and stuff to try to control my blood sugar because they were just wanting to give me insulin. I said, I'm not, yeah. I'm not trying to take more drugs. Mm -hmm. I want to do if anything I can control without medication, I want to do that. So right. I ended up between that, the, the diet change. And when I got home and as soon as I felt like I was able to do anything, I started doing some at home exercises, just got on YouTube and yeah. looked up beginner friendly, um, low impact workouts, but they were mm -hmm. all standing. Um, the, the videos were body project. If you yeah. look them up, they've got tons and tons of videos, but they were great. And I started doing them every morning. And as I did that for a couple of weeks, I noticed I'm starting to get more energy and I'm starting to feel a little bit better and I'm losing a little bit of weight. Yeah. And the better you feel, you're like, man, I could, I could be doing more. I can yeah. do, I can do more than this. And so, you know, I, I amped it up a little bit and I'm, starting to zero in on different, different types of diet exercise routines. And with that, I'm like, okay, well, what can I be learning that is going to change my life in a, in a way that this exercise and diet is. So I want to be, I want to be focusing on bettering my mind as well. So right. I start, I start reading books, you know, and trying to find association and every, every book I read is a self-development in some way. I'm, I'm in real estate. I read some real estate books as well, but my, my passion has really become self-development and self-improvement mm -hmm. because you can become whatever you want to be, whatever yeah. it is that you desire, you can create that in your life. And I think a lot of people get hung up on that. They're like, you know, you, the, the people that are, that are screaming the loudest, this message, yeah. generally they have a jet and they're like posing by their Lamborghini and yeah. <laughs> that doesn't resonate with me at all. Right. That's yeah. not, that's not who I am. I don't, yeah. I don't care to have that stuff. And yeah. you know, not to say I don't like nice things. I do. I like right. nice things, Yeah. but I know how much it, it makes me feel good to help somebody else. Absolutely. So, um, you know, if I can become the best version of myself that is able to help other people and, and really create success in others and see things in other people that they may not even see themselves. Yeah. That is, that's really what I see as being successful. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I go out and I look for opportunities. I, you know, I'm looking at people. I'm like, Hey, I want to build people up around me. This is, yeah. this has been something that I noticed my grandparents who they were preachers when I was a kid. Um, they, they weren't Christians growing up, but it, it, as adults, when my mom was a kid, they got saved and, and, uh, they were really good about this. They were always good about building people up and, and, I always loved that about them. They could make anybody feel special. We'd go to a restaurant, the waitress. If my grandpa was in the hospital, it would be the nurses coming in, the doctor. Everybody would would just, you would feel special when you're around them. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was the same way with kids. And and I wanted to, I want to be like that, you know? Yeah. I want I want to be, so, you know, have that charisma that they do. And I always wondered how you do that. And I've, I've studied communication a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but really the root of it, I think, is you just have to love people. You, yes. have to, you have to care about people. But, you know, all of these things, I, I got into a mastermind group also, you know, and you're reading about um, you, you'll be like the five people that you surround yourself the most, you spend the most time with. I'm like, man, yeah. I'm looking around at my friend group and <laughs> that, that's a, it's a hard thing to do to yeah. separate yes. from, from people because you love people. You, yeah. these are, these are your friends because they've been your friends, yes. but if they're not accomplishing anything and they're not, they're not driven in any way, it's really, it's really hard to make that distinction. But I, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, it's true. You are, 
my bank account probably resembles their bank account. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same mindset because I'm hearing, I'm hearing the negativity that is coming from them. So I, I found a group of people that are accomplishing things and they're trying and they're all just people We're it's, it's nothing. They're not all billionaire businessmen. That's not, that's not what it is. They're just trying to become the best version of themselves. So I got involved in that and I start taking away all of these ideas, which it does. Mm-hmm. It, it gave me ideas, um, that have rolled over into my business, mm-hmm. um, have made me lots of, lots of financial success, yeah. but really more than that, it's, uh, you, you gain happiness from making connections with people. Yeah. At, at least, at least I do. I know some people, yeah. some people lean on the crutch that they are a, uh, an introvert. And, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative to that. I, I think there's plenty of successful introverts, Yeah. but I think that everybody introvert or extrovert, we gain value from people in community. And, yeah. and I always encourage people whenever they say, oh, you know, I don't want to go out in a group of people. I don't, I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. We don't grow when we're comfortable. You have right. to put yourself right. in that, in that situation where you are outside of your comfort zone, where you are in fertile ground to grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've just been rambling and rambling and rambling. (laughs) What are you, what are your thoughts, Robin? (laughs) No, I, I enjoyed just hearing you speak about everything. Um, and you, like you said, we don't grow um, where we're comfortable. I like that a lot. But I want to know um, why. So, so first of all, like, how did all of that turn out when you were in the hospital? So the diagnosis was called ITP. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that stands for. If you Google <laughs> it, it'll tell you. Um, and it was really a inconclusive as to what caused it. Um, there was, I did read an article saying that if you had ever had COVID or if you had the COVID vaccine, that there was some like links to cases of that, but I haven't had any issues with it since I did go on to prednisone, a uh, pretty high dosage, like a hundred milligrams a day for, and it is stepped down, but I was on prednisone for about four months, which is a really long time to be on and a high dosage. And I was also, I was worried about that because yeah. A lot of people have side effects of their face swells up. They'll gain a bunch of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a number of negative side effects that a lot of people get. And fortunately, I didn't have any of them. Yeah, I didn't have any of them. But fast forward, I'm doing all of these things that are positive behavior changes. I ended up losing I, I got down to 200 and 202 pounds is the lightest. I'm right now 212 as of this morning. Uh-huh. So I, I fluctuate a little bit, but I, I stay right in this window of two, 205 to 215 is, is pretty normal. That's so, good. But yeah, and I, I have energy, which mm-hmm. is another key important thing for being able to perform at my highest level. Whenever you're going around and you're exhausted, how do you expect to be giving people your best? If you're pooped, you can't do it. (laughs) It takes, it takes energy. If you have big dreams and you have big goals, you're not going to get there sitting on your couch. You've got to get up and you got to do something. Yes. So I agree. that. That was a real key thing. And then, Um, you know, our minds, we have, we need specific nutrients for our minds to be firing on all cylinders. So Mm -hmm. just notice, you know, my diet before all of that, it was not uncommon to go to McDonald's Mm -hmm. four or five times a week and get, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple of, you know, a double cheeseburger, a McChicken and a soda every day. You know, that was not Mm -hmm. uncommon. You know, we're, I'm in a rush. I'd use the excuse. So I'm in a hurry. I don't have time to stop and, and go in and do something or it's more expensive or, or whatever. But yeah. what is it actually costing you? I mean, there, 
that stuff has gotten oh it's increased in price it's still cheaper to go do that than to go to a right. regular restaurant or to cooking at home is probably comparable even but yeah. but what is it costing you mm -hmm. the the food that is jam packed full of preservatives and we had we had some cupcakes that came from a local big box bakery um they were in a pastry dish at my mother-in-law's house she just threw them away last week but they've been in there since last june uh -huh. um and they looked exactly like when they came home from the bakery they oh, were wow. they were hard as a baseball but yeah <laughs> but they looked like that and i was like man i used to i could eat one of those six packs just bring it home and eat it before I get home. Like that was not a, yeah. that was not a problem for me. Yeah. Like I didn't even think twice about that. So it's, uh, it's just kind of eye opening. but, mm -hmm. and you hear about a lot of people that have a similar thing. You have a, a near death or, you know, car accident. Brendan Burchard had a, a car accident that almost killed him and he calls it a mortality motivation. Yeah. You're motivated by the fact that you, you saw that you could be at the end, you know? Yeah. And, and I went through that, um, all of that. I, I said, I didn't have health insurance. I was terrified while I'm in the hospital also about the bill that I'm racking up. I have a life insurance policy, um, $500,000 life insurance that, that my wife will get if anything happens. And I'm, I'm looking around this hospital room and thinking, you know, I'm just adding up. What is this going to cost me? Because you don't know what anything costs when you're actually in there. You don't know. So, right, yeah. I'm assuming everything, and you you hear of all these astronomical bills. It was an astronomical bill. Yeah. That being said, they discounted it heavily because I was a cash customer, no insurance customer. I'm still mm -hmm. paying on it, mind you. But I yeah. left with about a forty thousand dollar bill of. Yeah. Of stuff and that's the discounts so yeah. um i can easily look back to 2021 and say the absolute best thing that happened to me was mm -hmm. getting sick and going through that adversity and and being able to make that association is kind of powerful because you can look back over your life and, you know i have a previous divorce that that just knocked me flat on my face Mm -hmm. it it hurt bad my my son's mother is from my first wife and um you know i'm so grateful that yeah. i have that life experience that yeah. i've been through all of these things and i can see that god has carried me through them yes you know i don't i don't know what your faith is or what you believe but mm -hmm. I can a thousand percent tell you that I'm not even, I'm not even scared when it comes to adversity. I, I don't love it. Nobody likes going through things that suck. I definitely yeah. don't. Uh, you know, I had a conversation with my dad. He was down not that long ago and my mom passed away in 2014 and we were talking about this very thing. And, and he said, you know, I, I don't ever, I don't ever ask God to send me adversity because mm -hmm. it, it hurts and it's not fun. Mm -hmm. But when we go through it, when you realize that you're capable of a lot more than you thought you were, yeah, you are able to do and go places that you thought you'd never be able to go. Yeah. It's powerful. Yes. Absolutely. And I, I 100% agree with that because I believe that God, we, he guarantees pain. He guarantees adversity. Um, but it's his love that gives you the, the strength and the endurance to reach limits that you never thought that you could ever even have imagined that you'd be able to endure and get through it. And I think that's, why certain adversities and why I even started this podcast to bring these connections together, because I believe that that amplifies who God truly is, because I feel like he's not being amplified. We amplify the negativity in our lives more than we amplify him. So that's why I feel like 
this is definitely supposed to happen. And I wanted to know more about when you stated uh, before we started this podcast, you stated that you were dissatisfied with your accomplishments. What caused that? Why were you dissatisfied? I was dissatisfied because like I said, I, I never really felt like I was good at anything that I did. I was, I was mediocre. I was middle of the road, but nothing in my life had, that I'd ever done. Have I really stood out at, I, I got into real estate in 2019 and I doubled my income from, from the prior year of what I was doing. And that was really exciting. And that was cool but I wasn't even in the top 25 or, you know, I, I wasn't, it's not like I was the best at it. Mm -hmm. It's not like I was, you know, the best. I was just, I was okay. You could do it. You yeah. know, lear <laughs> learning, learning by taking my lumps and making yeah. mistakes. But the more I put myself out there and, and put myself into positions where I get outside of my comfort zone and I grow, I can see the bigger picture of, of what I'm supposed to be doing and who I actually am. Yeah. Um, but just being dissatisfied with not, you know, you make goals and you don't hit them. It, it starts to, to hurt, but a lot of people, whenever they set goals and they, they get close, you get halfway through the, the year and you see that you're not halfway to your goal. They will, pull back or they'll adjust their goal and, and make it less. Cause mm -hmm. I, I want to hit that goal. I really want to hit that goal. So I'm going to pull it back and make less. And what happens when you do that is you actually don't try as hard because yeah. you've, you've lowered your standard for what you expect out of yourself. Mm -hmm. So we don't accomplish what our goals are, we accomplish our standards, whatever, whatever standards you set for yourself or what you're going to create in your life. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was just dissatisfied with, I, I, I was never hitting my goals. Yeah. Yeah. It was great that I doubled my income. That, that was nice. The next year I switched real estate brokerages and I was making a higher commission split and I sold consider about half the houses that I did my first year, but I made a little bit more money. And I was like, okay, shoot, mm -hmm. I can do this. You know, you get comfortable and complacent. I'm like, well, you know, right. I could, I don't have to be rich. It's good. I'm good with this. It's fine. But knowing that I'm capable of doing more and just settling right here in the middle of the road, that bothers me. It, yeah. it bothered me. Yeah, can I get by on that money? Sure. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And like I said, I don't need a Lamborghini, but what could I do if I was operating at my maximum potential? Right. How many people could I help? How could mm -hmm. I be a blessing in other people's lives? What can I teach my son and what kind of legacy will I be able to leave? And saying that doesn't mean that I want to make all of this money. So he never has to work because right. I absolutely want him to, to learn how to, how to make his way through life. Everybody has their own life experience. And you see a lot of these trust fund babies that don't know how to function as mm -hmm. when they get it, you know, they get into their adult life and they've never had to have a job. They don't know how right. to, they don't know how to interact with people and they don't know how to Yes. not get what they want every time that something happens, you know, it, it's just devastating to their life if they don't get something that they want. Yeah. So being able to teach my son things. So I, from, from all of my life experience, um, and I started a podcast too, the way up podcast. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I started that in February of this year because I was thinking about my time in the hospital. I'm like, man, I haven't taught my son all of these things of how to be successful. So I wanted to have conversations with people that are, have accomplished great things in their life. And, and I don't think that success just means making a million dollars. I've, I've had, I've had plenty of guests on the show that have built multi-million dollar businesses, but I've also had plenty of people that 
that have success and, you know, maybe they're good at communicating with their spouse mm -hmm. or they are good at teaching their children something that, yeah. that I want to be able to do that too. Cause yeah. are, are you a parent, Robin? Yes. Uh huh. Have you ever lost your crap on your children? Yes. <laughs> oh. I, I, I hate when it happens because, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to be a great parent. Like yeah. I had, I had wonderful parents and I, mm. I think everybody does the best that they can. Absolutely. But I, when I had my son, that was like, I want to be, I want to be this guy's best dad. I want to be yeah. the best for him. And mm -hmm. I know I parented out of guilt a lot whenever mm -hmm. his mom and I separated mm -hmm. because he didn't get to grow up in a home with mom and dad in the same household. Yeah. And looking back, that was just foolish. Mm -hmm. God is carrying us through all of this and yeah. he's experiencing life exactly the way that it was planned. Right. Absolutely. It may not be what I think is ideal, but God knows better than I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I growing up or as he was growing up, I would, he'd throw a fit and I'd, I'd end up giving in. Okay, well, here you go. You can, you can have this. And yeah. you know, I'm, I'm paying for that a little bit at, at 14. He's a great kid. I'm not uh -huh. saying anything bad about him, but we're having to, we're having to retrain some things because of my deficiencies in parenting because of my mm -hmm. skewed view of, of the situation. Right. Yeah. But, um, honestly, I, I feel very grateful and blessed. I, I wake up every morning and before my feet hit the ground, I'm, I'm saying, God, thank you for the opportunities that you're going to, to put in front of me today. Thank you for the yeah. people that I'm going to meet today. I know that you're going to, you're just setting me up for success today. Thank you. And uh -huh. keeping that throughout the day, not saying I don't ever get off track. I real estate, you get thrown curveballs almost every day. There's something different, good or bad, but, but sometimes a lot of times things don't go the way that you plan. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind myself, I'm like, this is going to work it's going to work together for good. It's going to be yeah. okay. We're going to get through this, this challenge that I'm going through. I'm learning a lesson and what can I pull from this so that next time I'm in this situation, I can do this better. I can do this right. different than last time. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with that 100% because I, I am a strong believer on, you know, how they say history always repeats itself, but I feel that it's not supposed to. We're it doesn't to have to. Do we're supposed to make those changes. And yeah. that's why we have these lessons. If you keep having the same lesson over and over again, that's that means there's something that's not changing. There's something there that you're not doing. You have to apply the lesson learned and then your life will start to change in the right direction. So absolutely. I'm a believer in that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I just I really enjoyed this. And so you definitely feel satisfied with your accomplishments now, correct? So I don't feel like I've reached the pinnacle, which I think is the greatest thing that we're always growing and uh -huh. you're never at the top. You're never, mm -hmm. you're never done. Yeah. And I think that's exciting to me because mm -hmm. yes, I've, I have accomplished things. And I recently in August of this year, I started my own real estate team and we're starting a property management team and and i'm seeing some different momentum and i'm made a lot of really great connections yeah. so i'm I'm just excited about where things are headed mm -hmm. but um yeah oh i'm i'm excited i'm i'm grateful for where i am because this is yeah. exactly where i'm supposed to be today yeah i like that i like that a lot and you said your your what's the name of your podcast again it's called the way up podcast with Jeff Noel, the way up podcast. And what do you speak about on your podcast? Well, so I get people to come on and I ask them what they can identify that's positioned them to be successful in their life. Mm -hmm. I ask them to talk about 
some adversity that they've gone through, they've been able to overcome, uh, maybe s- some of the things that made them feel like giving up on their journey. Yeah. And I have had some incredible responses. Um, and I've learned so much that has helped me. Um, yeah. my, when, when I hear two or three people saying the same things has set them up for success. I'm like, well, you guarantee I'm trying it. I'm going to do yeah. it. Yeah. I, I definitely am not so full of myself to believe that I know everything. Cause I don't mm-hmm. obviously I, uh, and I definitely don't know what I don't know. So I want to learn from people what Mm -hmm. what's working for you if it's working for you how can i make it work in my life maybe i don't do it exactly the same way but Mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a shot and i have gained a lot of very valuable information that has actually changed things that i've dealt with for years Mm -hmm. Uh, one one of those things that is is jumping to mind is fasting like intermittent Mm -hmm. fasting even yeah. even some longer term fasting 24 48 hour fasting um and there's just so much medical research that conflicts with each other you know do this don't do this this is the best this is actually terrible for you you're you're right. ruining your ho- hormone production there's so much conflicting information how can anybody and and it's all coming out from scientists and doctors and you know somebody believes it and backs it so if it's working for somebody chances are i'll give it a try for a while and see how i feel with it yeah. and just really be mindful of what is what i'm feeling listening to my body does yeah. this give me energy mm-hmm. do i feel good do i go around feeling like i'm dissatisfied because i'm cutting something out of my life that i actually really like you know Mm -hmm. i i don't think that anything should just be completely blacklisted i say that Mm -hmm. you know there's trans fats and some things that we just know are bad you know if it causes cancer i'm probably not going to go that route but but the uh for the most part if you want a piece of cake occasionally, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, yeah. that piece of cake's not going to ruin your life. If, yeah. if that's the, the, every time you get sad, you, you go to that you yeah. know, or you're, you're leaning on it for something. It's no different than anything else. Yeah. So, you know, with moderation and, and I have to reel myself in. My wife has had to reel me in a few times cause mm-hmm. I'll, I'll get on a, tr- on this, I'm going to do this. Okay. (laughs) Like we're going to have to go run 10 miles. And she said, yeah, you can do that. I don't don't have any (laughs) desire to do that. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, that's great for you, but that's not for me. So, and that's okay. We are all on our own journey. Everybody is experiencing life through their own lens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's great. And I can even appreciate having an opposing view because it lets me see something from your perspective instead of mine. Yeah. Which I haven't always been that way. You know, mm-hmm. I used to, I used to get real heated into political stuff and you know, I haven't had a president that has made me rich or made me broke. And yeah. God is my provider. Yes. I, I'm not depending on who's in the oval office to take care mm-hmm. of me. Yeah. God is my provider. Absolutely. So I think we're going to be fine. I like that. I like that a lot. I really do. And in my opinion, I believe that you are very successful. I believe success is measured by what you lose because I feel like when God gives us the opportunity to experience empty, whether it's empty funds or you're just feeling emptiness inside that's we have to go through that in order to experience plenty and realize that we are filled with plenty because of the one who lives within us so i Mm -hmm. i loved hearing your story and i think that you are very successful i appreciate that i i feel i feel blessed i feel like i have more than more than i need i can pay my bills every month 
Um, mm -hmm. And starting businesses, that's scary. It, yeah. it, it's it's terrifying. We <laughs> uh, we got down, but but it's a faith builder too because mm -hmm. you step off the edge and you don't see that stair. You don't see the next step. Yeah. And you just whenever whenever it appears. Yeah. And and you feel that underneath your foot. We when we started this real estate team, we sunk everything everything we had we had we had some money put back in savings and we were like this is the time we've got to do it right now if we're going to do it yeah so we did it and we got down to our last we had a couple hundred bucks in the bank which mm -hmm. when you're in a business that can go in a day i mean that yeah. can go in an hour it can go so quick and but we were able to sustain until we got to the point where now it's it's starting to trickle in and it's, it's flowing and flowing. We've got lots of people. Uh, it's a faith building. We announced we were starting this real estate team and we had people calling us. Mm -hmm. um, our phones are ringing off the hook of, Hey, I want you to list our house. And we started doing things a little bit different so we could stand out. We're, mm -hmm. we're marketing differently than, than people in our market are. And, it's nothing new. We're not recreating the wheel. We're just doing things that other people aren't doing here. Mm -hmm. And we're standing out because of it. And it's, we've found ways to get clients to come in without having to spend tons of money on Zillow or realtor.com or the, the avenues that people pay for all of these lead generation that kind of, you could talk to any real estate agent. It's okay at best. You know, yeah. it's, it's not great. So, um, I feel like anything where I, I, I want to put my money as far as for lead production, I want to support things in my community. Mm -hmm. I want to do good in my community. I want to give back and, and I want to make connections that way. The, the leads that you get from a person saying, Hey, you know, I met this guy at this chamber of commerce function and, he just seems so authentic and real and he cares about people. And I saw the video of the way they're, they're presenting these listings and holy crap, it's insane. Yeah. These guys are awesome. You need to talk to them. That yeah. is worth its weight in gold mm -hmm. rather than somebody saying, Oh, I saw you, uh, you were looking at properties on the internet. Can I yeah. help you? And they're getting calls right. from <laughs> four or five other agents at the same time. Who are you going to pick? The person that your friend told you is probably a good route. You know, uh -huh. that's that's a more solid choice. So that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's I working. Like that. And it's yeah. working. <laughs> as long as it's working, I'm going to keep doing it. And what's the name of your real estate company? The real estate company. We are, I'm, I'm under the EXP Realty Brokerage, which is the fastest growing real estate brokerage in the like worldwide. Mm -hmm. But um, my real estate team is called the noble team. Okay. And we really and capitalize on no bull. We got your back and that's no bull. <laughs> so and we don't take ourselves too seriously. We, we like to have some fun. Yeah. But, um, it's a good time. Uh, when I got into real estate, I had this image of what I thought that a successful real estate agent looked like. So mm -hmm. I was dressing different than I do. And I was trying to speak differently than I do. And, you know, it, it wasn't working. It yeah. just wasn't working. And I wasn't, I wasn't super satisfied. And the more I get away from the image of what I think that I should be and just lean into who I am mm -hmm. and, and who I want to become, I find that I enjoy myself way more, but I'm received by people a whole lot better whenever I just let my guard down and I, I am who I am. I can't, I can't be anything more than that. I don't want to be anything different than that because it's not fun. It's hard trying to be something you're not. Yes, it is. And God created each and every one of us unique and different on purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's great that I am who I am. I think yeah. it's fantastic. So yeah. if you don't like it, I guess that sucks for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. 100%.
but thank you so much, Jeff. You you've added a lot to this to this episode, and I greatly greatly appreciate you coming on. All right, I appreciate you having me. And if there was any advice that you would want to just give our listeners, anything, um, what would it be? Any advice I could give your listeners? Well, I would say um, never stop trying to be the best of, mm -hmm. of what you are. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you have to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Just always, always push a little bit harder and know that you're not, you're not at the top of the game. You can do more. There's always somebody that's going to be better, but don't let that keep you from trying and putting an effort to become more. I like that. And yeah. how can all of our listeners get a hold of you? Well, um, I would absolutely love it if they would check out the Way Up podcast. It's on YouTube. It's on Apple, Spotify, really anywhere you get your podcast, you can find it. Um, uh, you can find our real estate team, the Noble Team EXP Realty. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We hit the social medias pretty hard. We do have a website. We're working on on being able to update that a little bit more. Need to get some help in the website design area. But we have it. It's thenobleteam.com. But yeah, I would love to have people reach out. Um, they can email me at the Way Up Podcast period, Jeff Noll, and that's G-E-O-F-F-K-N-O-L-L -L, at gmail.com. So the way at podcast, period, Jeff Noll at gmail.com. Okay. And that'll also be in the show notes as well. So okay. if that is all, thank you again so much. Again, I'm Robin Black with It's All About Healing Podcast and everyone stay blessed. All right. Thank you, Robin. No problem.